All right, guys, we are moving out of winter and into spring soon, <sighs> and we still have El Nino going El Nino. on. So we're here for this uh, episode of 10 Weather Chat to talk yeah. about how El Nino could affect the spring season ahead. Awesome, Cass. Thank you for joining us. We love these. Cass and I love to talk about all things weather in general. Today's focus, El Nino, coming out of winter, heading into spring. As usual, Cassie has prepared a lot of stats and charts, <laughs> and we'll go through it. So sit back, relax, and uh, hopefully you'll gain some more knowledge about the impacts that El Nino brings us in East Tennessee. So typically during an El Nino, we, yeah. which is the warming of the Eastern Pacific, yes. um, equatorial waters, right <laughs> for those of you, you Cass, over back there. here, yeah, back uh, there. it generally affects the large scale pattern across the United States, the lower 48. And typically what we would see mostly during late winter and into the spring season is an active Pacific jet, the southern branch of the jet stream. Mm -hmm. It would bring in a lot of moisture to the southern third of the lower 48. Right. And then to the north, it would bring in warmer and relatively drier conditions up there. Right. And wait till you see, uh, like we have a snowfall map we'll show and all the details come up. Certainly has played out, but as Cassie said, that's the represented by the green, more of your active moisture plume that warmer and drier and occasional cold coming into the northern U.S. And we, we had that in January. Let's kind of recap what we had during, <laughs> yes, during we winter. Did. Let's talk about the winter. Yeah, so, right. so to recap for everybody at home that hasn't heard, in, in the world of meteorology, we describe the seasons based on the calendar months yes. and average temperatures. So with December, January, and February having by the averages, the coldest temperatures. Right. Those are meteorological winter. Right. So we start with December. We had actually a very warm December, 22nd yeah. warmest tide. Um, and then right. we had a cool January. We yeah. had a lot of snow in January. Yeah, look what's in parentheses here. That lots one big of snow. Storm, lots of snow. And very, very cold air got down to zero degrees from yes. one morning. I mean, it was bitterly cold. So there's, so that's the oscillation though, between a warm and wet December and right. a cold and wet and snowy January. Right. And then for February, yep. we'll get to that in just a moment. Uh, we've yep. had the 24th wettest winter to date. Okay. So, so far with December, January, right. and so far in the February, 24th wettest. Which we really needed mm -hmm. coming out of that really dry fall. And Second dry driest fall. Exactly. So we need to have a lot of moisture during winter. Winter also is by the averages our wettest season. Great our point. wettest, yeah. pronouncing all the T's. <laughs> um, we're also tied for the 19th warmest February to date. Okay. But through the 14th, we were tied for the 10th warmest. We have yeah. not been exceptionally warm, just steadily warm this month. Wow. So warm December, colder January, some snow, and now we're back up to a warmer February so far. And we talked about that originally when we were talking about El Nino and the impacts it could have on East Tennessee, that yes. whatever it did, it would do a lot That's of. That's a great point. We're not here in El Nino. Whoosh, whoosh. Yeah. High and low. Yeah. Not in between too much, right? Yeah, and our warmest temperature we've had so far in February is 66 degrees. 66. Our normal yeah. average first 70 degree day is, is at the end of January. Yeah, so January we're actually, 30th, I think. Yeah. yeah, we're running behind. But we're still abnormally warm for the month of February. Yeah. So just different ways to get fun there. facts. I like this graphic, Cass. You're talking about your average high temperatures from March 1st through the end of spring and May 31st. Look at that difference. 50s That's, to 80s, right? So we're about to move on March 1st from meteorological winter into meteorological spring. We right. typically would see our temperatures warming up. But the big question is, how is El Nino going to affect this? Right. And with the latest outlook, I know this chart can be overwhelming initially. Yeah. Just realize that where you see the red, that's El Nino. Where you right. see the lighter gray, that's neutral. And where you see blue is La Nina. Yeah, each that's El Nino's sister. Just a weather joke. We like to have fun with that. The little, the little sister. Yeah, just... So each of these periods are a three-month average. Right. So the long story short of it, to give you the overview, is that El Nino is going away. Right. We're expected to move into neutral, neutral. Yeah. Uh, conditions, conditions as we go into the spring season. Briefly, maybe. Briefly. <laughs> and then the blue, see how the chances of the blue get much higher there? We could have, by mid to late summer, a La Nina. Yeah. We could swing completely from a, a historically strong El Nino to a La Nina, which is, it does that. Right. It tends to yo-yo very quickly between the two. And that, for a later discussion, and I'm sure we'll have a Tim Weather Chat on that coming up, could impact the fall and the tropical outlook in the Atlantic season in a lot of So we'll talk more about that later. Yeah, so that's that's the idea though, is that we're going to be transitioning out of El Nino into neutral conditions likely as we go through the spring season. So right. here's how that could impact our weather okay. in East Tennessee. Yeah, so we're, we're changing seasons, changing hats here. So. Changing seasons. So we yeah. talked to the National Weather Service and they were saying that the temperature tends to be near average or slightly below average during right. an El Nino. 
Right. But there's no really strong signal to say that it will be that way. Right. That's just where it has trended in the past. Right. It, like a lot of things in weather, we'd love it if it's like, oh, well, it's definitely going to do that. You know, we don't use the word definitely a lot, right? Because it's, yeah. it's so variable with weather, it can change. But yeah, a little bit below average temperatures, perhaps, El Nino and spring. Perhaps, but of course, it doesn't always follow that trend. <laughs> yeah. doesn't always follow. It could be, right. warm. It could be warm. Um, warm. We've also looked at the precipitation trends. They yeah. tend to be drier than average during right. the spring season. Which you may not think. A little, little interesting. Yeah. yeah, it just, the Pacific jet starts to lift to the north, and so it kind of takes the moisture with it. But yeah. Will that happen this year? We'll have to see as we're transitioning. Right. And then for snow, the focus for the snow is farther north. And generally with El Nino, yeah. the impacts from it are to our south and to our north. We kind of get in the middle. Yes. We get caught in the middle here in Tennessee. Right. So the snow is typically focused farther to the north. But here's another reason why Todd and I have been looking at this. Yes. The odds of having an, a very cold outbreak right. or a big snow event are actually slimmer than normal right now right. because of what's happening to our north. Look, I mean, this does tell a story with El Nino. This is the current snow the depth across the country. Snow depth, snowpack, yeah. I mean, look at the northern section. Some of these areas that usually have snow on the ground all winter long, even into early spring, hardly have much snow at all. You really almost have to go to the U.S.-Canadian border. Out west has a lot of snow. Northeast from a recent storm, some snow, but hardly any snowpack. And Cass, you made a great point of that. Without the snowpack on the ground, it's hard to get the really cold air masses being sustained into mm -hmm. the eastern U.S. Without snow on the ground, they'll be more easily modified and warming as that cold air tries to move southward. So to your point, it's going to be hard to get a really significant cold air outbreak transitioning to early spring. Which remember, when we showed you the impacts of El Nino, the warmer than average temperatures up here for the northern tier of the country. It matches up. I mean, some of these areas are running 10 to 15 degrees above average for the wow. entire winter. Yeah. And so that's why this area would normally have a right. full snowpack through this, especially in February yeah. and into March. That's like their snowiest month of the year. So yeah. the fact that there's no snow on the ground tells you how anomalously warm it has been. And then that impacts what happens downstream in East Tennessee. Exactly. If I'm in Fargo or Bismarck, North, don't you think they're loving that? Yeah, I mean, not having I, to shovel. I, I kind of think they would, are loving El Nino winters because it pretty much is a good signal for them that yeah. they have a lot less snow, which they've seen. Yeah, which is what we were talking about, how the signal is stronger to the north and stronger to the south. When yes. they have an El Nino, they can pretty much bet on below average snowfall yeah, exactly. and above average temperatures. In Tennessee, like I said, we get, we get caught in the middle, yeah. and so we could kind of go <laughs> either way. So right. the next thing on our list, after okay. talking about the snow potential comes the potential for severe weather because moving into spring, right. we move into our severe weather season. A lot of folks, they want to know about that. Have a lot of questions. Some folks, I know, you know oh, severe weather, I'm not a big fan of that. So, well, let's talk about it. Yeah. yeah, so specifically talking about tornadoes. Okay. There tends to be fewer tornadoes in an El Nino spring than in a neutral spring or in a La Nina spring, particularly La Nina. Some of right. our biggest tornado outbreaks in March of 2012, April 27, 2011, right. and in April of 1974, those right. all occurred during La Nina springs. La Nina springs. So we're La Nina is the one you got to watch out for. Yeah, we're in El Nino, so a lot of folks will be, oh, good. But I think the next graphic says this, fewer, but They'll not zero. Guard down. But not zero, yeah. right? <laughs> fewer, but not zero. So this is the average number of tornadoes by month in East Tennessee yeah. that we have on record. Not a forecast, this is just average. Just yeah. as, These are just averages. Typically, we start to see our tornado numbers ramping up during March, mm -hmm. especially during April. April is our April's it. typically most tornadic month. Now, there have been right. the 1974 super outbreak and the 2011 super yeah. outbreak that skewed these numbers a little bit. But That's true. Just tells you April's had the most tornadoes. Yes. Then we go into May and June. So that's our spring severe weather season. Right. So these are the months coming up that you're going to have to watch out for the potential for severe weather. And even though we tend to see fewer tornadoes, not every El Nino is the same and they can still happen. They can still happen. And interesting, and you've pointed this out before as well, Cass, that there's a secondary severe weather season from October to November. Again, not nowhere near what we see in spring, but just something that we typically see because it typically gets warm before you move into the winter months. And, uh, you get so, a little bit more of that yo-yoing. Exactly. The clashing of the air masses, but that's it. For instance, this past fall, we didn't have that. Yeah. In October and November, we did not have that secondary severe weather season. We didn't even have any rain <laughs> during yeah, exactly. that time frame at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, didn't exactly. have any storms at all. We'd have taken a thunderstorm or two just yeah. to get the rain with it, but not much. Yeah, so that's just a good reminder that we're moving into the spring season. We need yeah. to talk more about severe weather in general, but when right. it comes to an El Nino year, it adds a lot more uncertainty, tends to lean toward cooler yes. and drier conditions, right. less snowfall, right. and fewer tornadoes. But again, 
there's a lot of uncertainty because we're right. transitioning out of El Nino going through the next several months. Yes. So you'll need to check in. Now next week right. is Severe Weather Awareness Week and we are going to be covering a different topic every single day. Yes to get you prepared for severe weather season. So tune in next week. That's going to be from February 26th through March 1st so that you can check out and get ready for the uh, upcoming spring potential severe weather season. Yeah, we're putting together some different features. I think you really enjoy it. A lot of different things to look forward to. Cass and I did a hell one just recently. So uh, we have fun with it, but also on a serious note, I want you to be prepared for the upcoming season. And of course, we'll have more 10 weather chats of, about those topics yes. uh, to help get you prepared as well. So thank you so much for joining us today. All right.